Hello and welcome back to the Iron Man Challenge. Now when we left off, we finally had enough money to buy and indeed construct a Weaverian Dye Works. It has not been that long since I did that, but I decided, hey, you know what, let's look for another tournament because I have a very small amount of cash right now. However, I do actually have a rather nice thing to, to tell you. Basically what I have is I have a couple of companions that I thought would be not so good to join us in the in the long run, but I have a bunch of companions that I can send off for potential right to rule increases, and that's exactly what I want them for. So I basically have uh, Yamira, Jeremus, Katrine, and uh, who's the last one that I got? Rolf, I believe. Rolf. And I'm going to be sending all of these off in the coming days to get some right to rule because if I send off all four of them, I'm going to get 12 right to rule. Pretty significant number. So yeah, anyway, we're just going to continue our attack here <laughs> in the Kurjit Khanate territory. Uh, the tournaments are not exactly my favorite thing ever. But thanks to me having quite a few companions in my army right now, I should have quite a lot of uh, an opportunity to actually fight these companions. And they're going to be very easy. I mean, the Sword Sisters are quite easy as it is because they only have 44 HP. And that's going to be pretty easy to, to win. However, then they're going to give me these. They're going to give me these Javelins. And I don't have thrown, thrown weapon proficiency or anything like that. But thankfully, there are no people with shields. So I should do... Oh, I actually... Wow, okay. <laughs> I should do okay. Now, thankfully, you can, you can pick up the enemy's weapons and I have a shield so I have an advantage over basically everyone else in the tournament now which is really really nice and maybe I can do some damage wow this guy is whoa okay is that Dranton is that Dranton right there if that's Dranton yep it is I thought it was okay so let's just go to the next round straight up four teams with one fighter each I really do like starting with a bow and a dagger it makes everything so much easier anyway after this particular battle well what are we going to do well, I think what I am going to try to do is I will try to maybe buy some spice because, of course, that was the main reason why I actually headed down initially into Carnate territory because I do not have that much money. And I thought, hey, you know what? I'm going to... I don't even know what's going on here with the speed bonus weird thing going on. Anyway, yeah, I don't have an, I don't have a lot of money to trade, so I, I noticed a tournament here. I thought, okay, let's do it, you know, let's do it, have some fun. Okay, so there you go, we eliminated those. And now, thanks to the fact that I am doing a tournament, I will be able to buy some spices here in the nearby towns. Tolga and Ikima usually have at least one spice stack each, and then I can sell that somewhere else. Okay. Okay. This is bad. This is pretty bad. Whoa, that was close. Okay, that was super close. Zarina is actually on the enemy team. I think we're dead. I think we are dead. There's nothing I can do about this. It is one of those things. I really, really wanted to win this. This was like a... This was like my lifeline, basically. I mean, I still have the Weavery and Die Works, of course, so I can still fall back on that. But it's really hard to get the cash together to uh, attempt to do some trading. I very much wanted to do that. I only have 16 in throwing proficiency, as you can see right there. So really, really bad. But we can try it. We can try it. I might I might surprise you. Maybe. <laughs> uh, maybe, just maybe. Going to say it's unlikely at this point. Oh, it's Dranton. Are you serious? Dranton and Zarina on the same team? Right, yeah, that's just never going to work. That is just never going to happen in a million years. Oh, well, never mind. Okay, so I guess what I will do now is I will make my way back to Sea Raider territory. Maybe I should try and see if I can buy... No, I literally have 159 dinars. I really don't have enough. Oh, phew. Okay, so that was actually kind of hard. <laughs> Trying to get these step bandits into a battle with you is just insanely difficult because they're so incredibly fast. Anyway, this is a nighttime battle. Matteld has just leveled up to nine thanks to our trainer skill. And I'm not going to charge them straight up. We're not going to charge them straight up. 
We're just going to be a little bit more careful here because even though the Step Bandits are really not very well geared, I would like to make it so that we don't lose too many of our units. Most of these Man-at-Arms can now advance into Knights as well, by the way. So hopefully we'll get that working relatively soon. I don't know whether these guys come with Lancers, do they? Do they have Lancers equipped? I'm not entirely sure. Oh yeah, by the way, here are my, my uh, settings, exactly the same as always. I'm just going to make sure to show those at least once per episode because otherwise the comments will flood in. They'll be like, what settings are you playing on? And so on and so forth. And there you go. So yeah, thankfully we are still playing on those and I have not once actually felt like I would like to change them, which is actually kind of refreshing because most of the time if I'm playing on a high difficulty I'm, I'm kind of like, oh, you know, it would just be really nice if I could just lower this setting or lower that setting or whatever the case may be. But I'm actually very much enjoying playing at such a high percentage at this point because usually, and I've, I've said many times, I absolutely loathe playing on campaign AI on high. I think playing on campaign AI like that is just really, really harsh. And uh, it's kind of imbalanced in many respects because it basically makes it so that the AI can recuperate their forces so incredibly fast. And that's just something that I don't really enjoy. I don't like the grinding, uh, you know, against innumerable amounts of units. But in this case, I actually don't mind too much because we're not fighting vassals yet. Maybe if we're fighting vassals soon enough, I'll be like, okay, yes, please, you know, please, please let me reduce the campaign AI, you know, that kind of thing. But, uh, I don't think I'm going to be at that stage just yet. Anyway, I have 12 Swadian Knights ready to level up, and then I will have 15 Swadian Knights total. I'm not going to be leveling them up just yet because each one of these is going to increase our wages by 20. That's going to be a pretty significant amount. All right, so we finally returned back to Rivercheck territory, and uh, we're going to be doing this. We're going to be doing a Sea Raider fight. I'm going to try to get as many of them captured as possible because I am, again in debt yes <laughs> can you believe it i literally just got enough money to be able to build that weavery and dye works and then it was all gone you know like just like straight up just gone because of course we were investing it in a business and i had a thousand left and i thought to myself oh yeah we're doing pretty well now and then i spent all of that money recruiting companions yes recruiting companions and of course entering that failed tournament that we did earlier on in the episode just a hint here if you're ever really really low on money and you have a very limited amount of resources in that regard. Don't do tournaments in Kurgit territory. They're just way too difficult, at least for me. And I'd highly recommend doing it somewhere else because, let's face it, you're probably going to have a much better time doing it in Nord territory or in Swadian. And you're just going to get much better weapons. You know, you're going to get much better weapons. You're not going to have to deal with bows or thrown weapons. Of course, Go for it if you are specialized in these particular weapons. I'm not saying that you shouldn't take these tournaments when they appear, but for me right now with my character, I'm much better at using one-handed, decent at using two-handed, but everything else, awful. So if I can get into a Swadian or Nord, you know, Nord tournament, then that's fantastic. As you can see, I literally have zero. <laughs> I literally have zero dinars. That is kind of awful. And I don't even have that much space to take some of this stuff here, but we are going to need to take it because my uh, other combat companion, which I'm going to want to use, is... Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. Other people are having all kinds of problems, but yeah, anyway. Uh, Alayan. Alayan is the other guy that I wanted to use as a combat companion. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. So I'm going to give him a crude male shirt... Going to give him the helmet, Nordic shield. He's already using a flanged mace, by the way, and I don't really want him to use a sword at this point. I'm going to give him another shield. Or actually, I'm going to use this shield just because you never know when I may need one. I have six horses now, by the way. So we have a maximum amount of speed. And otherwise, uh, yeah, okay. So what we're going to be doing going forward, once my Weavery and Dye Works is actually paying off, I am going to start recruiting Vagir archers. And I will then try to hunt down some of the less powerful vassals and try to take them on in a uh, combat situation. 
Don't know whether that's going to really work out too well, but we're going to try our best nevertheless. Now, I am going to... Hmm, yeah, I had a bit of a, a difficulty finding Sea Raiders in this area because we did eliminate the Sea Raider landing and there are not that many of them left over. So that is a problem, but we could head over to Cure or perhaps and maybe find a Ransom Broker there. I'm just hopeful that my Weavery and Dye Works will be up and running by the time my wages come around next week. Because if it's not, then we'll have some tr <laughs> we'll have some trouble. Yes, certainly have some trouble. Okay, so here we go. Nice. Let's see how much we're going to get. So we have about 200. So we've got 500 now. And then look at that. 1,300. 1,300. Just literally straight up instantly from prisoners. Isn't that such a fantastic thing? It is really a fantastic thing. And the trade routes. The trade routes are helping us a great deal as well. So for example, you can just go here, sell all this stuff, and then you can trade that for the iron. And then you only pay 23 for this iron. Technically... I mean, you're still trading your, your loot for it, but it's still decent because you're technically paying 23. So anyway, we're going to go over to Bundak here and we're just going to say that we want to we want him to leave. And hmm, Rolf, I think. Rolf is having some diff difficulties with us, so I'm just going to tell him to go off now and do his thing. And then we can go, back, go down to Ravidin and sell our iron for wow pretty nice look at that we bought them for 23 even though we were kind of trading our loot and now we're selling it for 700 total really nice really really nice gains right there and it's just a small small trade route you know just just that gave me 700 extra dinars in comparison to other things so anyway what i could do now is i could go to ikimur and we could actually start you know, getting some, uh, getting some spices, you know, we could get some spices. Okay. So now what I could potentially do is I could become free from our mercenary contract. I am going to renew the contract with King Yaraglek for the moment. I'm pretty happy being part of the Vagiers right now. And I don't think we are having too many difficulties with being a mercenary of theirs. So I think we should be fine. Let's go into some of the other villages around here i'm just thinking that maybe we should take some of their raw materials so we'll see how that goes but otherwise oh they got furs here wool cloth hmm we should probably assess local prices because wool cloth is pretty good here i think the pricing is pretty good maybe doesn't say why doesn't it say about wool cloth come on wool cloth i need my trade skill to actually be working for me here thank you very much uh wool cloth oh selling it at yalen would give us 30 dinars profit Per item that's kind of awful isn't it that is pretty awful okay let's just see if we can get oh yeah we, we, we failed this quest but that is literally just the marshal i didn't really want to get into battles at this point because let's face it we really don't have the army for it or maybe we do but i think personally it would be better to wait a little bit of time before we go in maybe get about 60 units before we go into a vassal battle and that's not even going to be that difficult to get as I said, I, what I would like to do is get some archers from the Vagiers and then we will try to level those up a little bit. And then at that point, my Weaver and Die Works will be rolling. And oh, these guys do have lances. Do they? Yeah, it seems like they do have lances, which is pretty bad, actually, because that means I can get eliminated really, really fast. I've seen a bunch of comments, actually, where, where people are saying, oh, what do you think? He's going to get eliminated. You know, episode 12, episode 30, from a lance to the face. And I'll tell yeah, uh, sure. I, I wholeheartedly agree. Probably. <laughs> Probably going to happen. But we'll see. We'll see. I'm going to try my very best to avoid that kind of... That kind of fate. And uh, bear in mind that when I'm not doing the Iron Man challenge, I am being a lot more audacious, a little bit more, well, foolish, <laughs> I guess you could say, because I know that there's not really that much of a penalty for me dying. And uh, some of the time I just don't really mind, you know, but in this, I'm going to be much more careful. So I wouldn't be surprised if I, I don't. OK, you know what? I'm just going to stop. <laughs> I'm just going to stop my line of line of thought right there because I will jinx myself so hard that a soft breeze will then eliminate Mr. Beartild when next it has the opportunity. So I'm going to just stop talking about my potential demise and we will then instead talk about 
getting some spice maybe or yeah yeah i don't even know anyway we're going to continue taking these guys we took a couple of them prisoner as well and i mean just selling a little bit of loot here and there is always a good idea okay so uh no i'm going to side with mattel here mattel is our our wonderful wonderful companion and yamira is not going to be joining us for the most part anyway let's see if we can maybe send her off already yep Okay, look at that. Very, very quick. Look at that. That is quite amazing, actually. And I'm not going to be taking a look at how much I actually have in terms of uh, right to rule just yet, because what I would like to do is um, to just basically send off all of our companions first, and then I'll do a, like a, a roundup as we go forward in the game, and we'll see how much we actually have at that point. And I think it could be quite surprising, because I think right now... Ooh, Ooh, hello. That's a big party. I like it. That is a big party. Hey, hey, come back. Come back here. Anyway, yeah, I think it's going to be pretty surprising how much money we're... How much, how much money? How much right to rule we are actually going to gain. And uh, I was talking about money there because, of course, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing dollar signs on these prisoners right here. I'm seeing dollar signs. Let's do this. Let's go straight up and see if we can... Uh, oh, hello. Sabula so Noyan is wanting to be a bit annoying here. <laughs> uh, a bit annoying? Noy annoying? Yeah, you get it? Ah, uh, yeah. Anyway, bad jokes aside, we are now going to be fighting in mountainous terrain. This is certainly not my favorite terrain, but it is going to prevent the enemy from being extremely dangerous with their lances. So that should be pretty good. We'll see how it goes. My infantry is going to be really slow here. But if we stand about here, maybe, if we stand about here, maybe move our, might move ourselves a little bit closer and things, then we should do all right. Maybe. Uh, we'll see. Oh, yes, you got murdered. Well, actually, technically, you got knocked out. So I can't really say you got murdered when I'm using a mace. But anyway, let's hope I don't get killed by some of their throwing weapons as well, because they can be pretty effective with those too. And speaking of that... When I'm rolling a little bit more in cash, because we're certainly not rolling in it right now, but when I am rolling in it a little bit more, I am most likely going to try and get the best helm in the game. And that is going to be, I think, a moose helm. <laughs> if you don't know what I'm talking about, then, uh, well, yeah, moose helm is a thing, uh, basically a term that I coined back in... The original prophecy of Pendor? Is it the, is it the original prophecy of Pendor? I, I'm not entirely sure. It's been such a long time, but was it the? No, it might have been the, the actual like original series of Warband. But oh well, whatever the case. If my memory fails me, then maybe someone else will know in the comments. But Moose Helm. I was talking about the Moose Helm. It's basically this big helm that, that has like wings. I guess it's I guess it's probably called a winged helm or something like that. But I called it a moose helm because it has really large, you know, things on the top. So it's kind of like moose antlers, I guess. But anyway, the point is, is that that helm, I think, is probably going to be the thing I will choose. Because as, as, as far as I remember, it has about 55 head armor. And if I can get a good modifier to it, you know, so if I can get something like a lordly or a thick or reinforced or something like that, then I'll probably have like 58 or even 60 to head armor. And that's going to hopefully prevent me from dying uh, from maybe a headshot. I'm not entirely sure at the moment whether that will be the case. Whoa, these are some really nice horses. These are some really, really nice horses. So I'm going to actually take some of those. And then we'll just sell the rest. Don't have much space because I bought all this salt. But it is necessary. All right, so... Uh, oh, yeah, so apparently Elaine likes Yamira, but unfortunately uh, Yamira is not going to be staying with us. As you can see, she's already left to uh, <laughs> spread my name and so on and so forth. But otherwise, let's talk to Katrine now and hopefully we can ask her to... No, she's, she's still not going to do that. Oh, well, never mind. Hopefully soon she will be able to. And uh, let's... Ah, uh, oh, Ferentis is back. Fantastic. Very, very nice to see him back. He can start leveling up again relatively nicely. And Shavi has leveled up. Okay, so my plan with the Shavi, you already know what it is. I'm going to be leveling up spotting, pathfinding, tracking, maybe, and trainer skill with her. 
But for the most part, what I want to do first is I want to get her to 12 strength. Why, you ask? Well, the Warbow. The Warbow uses, well, requires power draw 4 to even be equipped. So we are hopefully going to be getting something like that. And then Deshavi will have the best bow that she can possibly have. And then she'll be really good and getting a whole bunch of kills and wonderful things like that will happen. So hopefully we'll do that. And otherwise, hopefully I can sell some salt here. Yeah, salt sells for a pretty decent amount here. But unfortunately, this particular merchant does not have a lot. So we'll just sell the salt here. We could also sell the spice for a pretty decent amount here too. Maybe that would be an idea. Hmm. That might be an idea. Uh... Do we need to get a shield for any reason? I don't think we need to get a shield or anything like that. So I guess I'm just going to sell the spice here. That's 2,100. That's pretty decent. So let's sell that. There, there it is. There it is. Yes, that is the moose helm that I'm talking about. That is the moose helm. But unfortunately, this one is a cracked one. And you can see that it's 51 head armor, which is actually a lot better than what I'm currently using. But I will be unable to justify spending 1,000 on that right now. So let's just sell all these horses and all the king's men. <laughs> Couldn't put him together again. Yeah, exactly. And anyway, let's go into the tavern. Maybe there's a ransom broker. Yeah, there is a ransom broker. We're getting super lucky right now. There you go. 3,700 dinars. I think that is going to be easily enough for me to justify now going after a bunch of Vagia units and leveling up some archers because it's about time that we get a little bit more shall we say variety in our army and i think it could be much more fun as well to uh, have some people that are actually capable of, of killing enemies from far away instead of just having to rely on you know our cavalry or infantry or whatever the case may be so we're just going to recruit a couple i'm going to try and get mm, maybe about 15 Maybe something like that. I think that would probably be pretty good for us. And then maybe we can go somewhere else. Oh, okay, yeah. Everyone is having difficulties with me sending off these people. And by the way, there is a way that you can send off companions in a certain order so that no one gets annoyed by it. And uh, yeah, that that's definitely something that uh, I maybe should have taken into account of, but I, I didn't think it was going to really make that much difference, to be honest. I thought maybe, you know, it's going to make a little bit of a difference, but for the most part, I didn't think it was really going to cause people to want to leave or anything like that. So hopefully it won't. Yeah, but as I am running around, my trainer skill is working. And there's another five. There we go. Okay, so now we've got 70 units. And as you can see, most of the vassals that we're seeing around us right now, they don't really have that big an army. They, they've got about 59, this guy. And I, thought, I think I saw someone else that had about 38 and things like that. So these guys are going to level up pretty fast. Katrine can hopefully now go off and... Yep, there we go. She's going to go off and do that. And these are the people that we're going to be using for the most part, with the exception of... Oh, Lezalit. Oh, yes, I forgot about him. I was actually looking for him, and I couldn't find him for the life of me. I don't know why. I don't know why he's so difficult to find. But I can only assume that he's probably in a Nord town or something, because I checked uh, Kuro, Rivercheg, Kudan, Ravadin, Ikimur, and Tolga. I didn't check Nara or Halmar, so maybe that would have been an idea. Ah, uh, oh well, never mind guess it's not too big a deal and we're going to be heading on over here uh jeremus has now joined us back that's really not anything too good i guess because uh, artimena does not like him one bit let's get a couple more vagia footmen leveled up oh yeah by the way there is also a formula that is to do with leveling up units so for example if you leave a certain amount of units uh, to be upgraded if you know what I mean so if they have an upgrade available and you leave those then the next units that will level up or will gain experience will sl will gain slightly more experience over time so whenever they gain experience they'll gain slightly more and it is a very small percentage but it does help in those situations where you have a very high tier unit and let's say you're talking about nord veterans here because we do have a couple of nord veterans here so let's say one of these or two of these or maybe three of these were all ready to level up 
and I didn't level them up. Well, it would be a lot easier for me to get the last two leveled up into Nord Huskals if I left them without the upgrade. So there is a there is a formula out there about that, and it has been proven as far as I'm aware. Maybe I'll put it on the screen if I can find the documentation about it. I'm pretty sure there is something out there about it, but if I can't, then, well, you just have to take my word for it, I suppose. But anyway, uh, how are we doing on food here? Not too bad. Yeah, we're doing we're doing pretty all right. Let's go into the tavern here because you never know whether it's been refreshed. Maybe Lezolet's going to be here. Doesn't look like that is the case. Oh, uh, well, never mind. Okay, so what we're going to do, I did say that we were going to fight some, some vassals in this episode, but I'm actually not going to do that. I am actually going to be ending this episode off here, and we will be fighting some vassals in the next episode. We are right next to the Nords. We are at war against them. We are a mercenary. It only makes sense, doesn't it? It totally makes sense. And I have 3,700 dinars. That should be enough to level my Swadian knights into knights. Well, level my man at arms into knights. And then level my Vagia veterans and, and so on and so forth. Not the Vagia veterans, you know. My Vagia, Vagia units into archers. And then we'll go into a fight. I hope that you have enjoyed this series so far. And I... I'm, I'm, I'm getting a bit worried now because going into a vassal battle will probably result in my demise. We'll see. Anyway, I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.